So, okay, my name is Anil Gorbole. I, I work in the Xeon product planning and marketing group. Actually, marketing is like a side role for me, but uh, all the advanced features of uh, yeah, the CPUs, right? So, uh, because I have more subject matter expertise on that, they let me also do the marketing and evangelism for this thing. So, anyway, so for my talk today, I'm, I'm really, it's a simple talk, it's not too long but really trying to point out how CXL, uh, the value prop of CXL attached memory from a server point, of view, right? And uh, and then also, you know, I guess yesterday's audience was different, was IT guys. So wanted to stress that, hey, CXL is definitely a, a consortium now with big momentum behind it and it's here to stay. So feel, you know, you should feel confident to adopt it. So, but anyway, that's my talk. Let's just get underway without further ado. Next slide, please. Next slide, right. Okay. So I always like to start by you know uh, by showing something where the audience can relate relate to, right? So as we all know, on the left graphic there, all these popular uh, memory intensive workloads invoke today. Right, so of course nobody can argue with AI ML, and then databases and um, you know and the analytics, all that is always there. Web caching stuff, content delivery networks, and virtual desktop infrastructure. You know these are just a few. I'm sure there's so many more. Right, so these are all memory intensive. But what's going on? And then uh, to help that, right? So the CPU makers like us are are putting out CPUs with more and more cores. So like I would almost call it exponential. I mean, co uh, CPUs with 200 plus cores are, are very much here on the near horizon. It's not even like in the future. Uh, but in the as the last graphic shows, the scaling of DRAM is not quite happening so fast to keep up with this, right? In my young days, in the late 80s, we used to get four times uh, the DRAM, you know, capacity every every three years, I would say, right? Now, you're lucky to get 50% improvement um, every three years, right? For example, we've been on the 16 gigabit uh, basic DRAM chip for so long now, and uh, 24 gigabits, which is 50% more, have, 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 have kind of started rolling out. And then uh, the 32 gigabits have also come out, which is another 50%, but it's gonna be a while before they come, right? So long story short, the memory cost, and because of this non-scaling, right? So the DIMMs, if, if you have to feed all these hungry mouths, which are the CPU cores, the amount of memory you're going to need uh, attached to the CPU is going to be really, really big. And, and yes, people are doing it, but uh, today, because of that, these DIMMs are expensive and their memory costs are dominating the server's bill of material, right? So that's that's the real thing. It's not the, it's not the CPU. So don't blame Intel. Don't don't think they are scheming everything. So it's the memory makers who are enjoying today. So anyway, so next slide, please. So this is a quick slide again for those who are not familiar with CXL, right? So why why is CXL a big deal, right? So this is a slide from the consortium stack actually, and as I show on the left side, right? So we've been using PCIe as a device connect to the CPU for all these years, like two, two decades now. So why the need to invent CXL, right? So uh, these are the two things uh, we are showing there on the left side, uh, circle, not circle, uh, put in those uh, boxes. One is, of course, to improve the performance of heterogeneous uh, accelerators even more by way of doing coherent memory, you know. So as you know, today, PCI-based accelerators are very much involved and they, but the PCI device memory is considered a MMIO or memory map IO memory. So in that sense, you cannot directly cache it. Uh, only way PCI devices uh, then really you know, send any meaningful data to the server is by using DMA. So the, it has to be a kernel call, device initiates the DMA, whether it's right to the CPU and all that, right? With CXL, now this device memory is an extension of the system DRAM address space. And that's what I call a coherent, uh, you know, basically it adds coherency to the heterogeneous computer, uh, heterogeneous accelerators memory, right? So that's one use case. But the other use case, because CXL uh, adds the capability to do coherent memory, 
a lot of people said, hey, how about we just add a memory? I don't want to do any acceleration. I just want to add more memory to the system. And guess what today? Uh, like I would say 95, a lot of, like most people today are, are going after that value pop of CXR, right? So, okay, next slide, please. Yeah, and again, uh, so so CXL, uh, basically, like the how to add memory to the system, CXL is now a big uh, a big boon to us, you know, as I'll show you in the next slide, but a quick uh, refresher on how CXL works, right? So CXL does not require any new uh, interfaces on the processor. So CXL uh, protocol uh, piggybacks as an alternate pro protocol over the existing PCI links, which is what I show in the... Uh, graphic on the right there, right? So the so motherboard starting with the Gen 5, uh, Gen 4 CPUs at Intel, which were the Sapphire Rapids, right? They feature these PCI slots, but you can either insert a CXL device or a PCI device. And at link up time, the CXL device will communicate with the host that, hey, I'm going to speak CXL. Then the host will appropriately switch the host IP, as I showed there, and um, and, and the, the communication with CXL, right? So in that sense, we we are using the existing infrastructure. So CXL adoption should be fairly easy. You know, we don't have to make new hardware or anything. Next slide. So uh, yeah, I was saying like the, the biggest uh, thing uh, people are uh, trying to use now is to, uh, for, with CXL, is to add more memory. And here's a graphic I'm showing, right? So I'm showing the CPU with, let's say, you know, eight DRAM channels today. And, and of course the DRAM channels on the attached to the CPU will always go up because this slide is not meant to put down the CPU attached DRAM. The CPU makers will always uh, make sure they can provision as many channels as they can, can before uh, the package size explodes, right? Yes, if I could, I could. I would want to put 12 DRAM channels today on the CPU uh, on the current generation, right? But, you know, you have to always worry about cost and all. So how is the, the, and that's what I'm showing on the left side, right? It's now getting as the more and more pin counts uh, the DRAM channel of DDR5, right? And I show on the right side on the CXL uh, that one DDR5 channel will cost you around 125 pins. And versus one CXL by 16 link is only about 66 or so pins. And because the CXL link by 16 is about the bandwidth of two DDR5 channels, you effectively save 250 pins by adding a CXL, right? And then the other net points, right? On a, on a server, yes, you can do two DIMMs per channel, but often the bandwidth will go down. So sometimes applications don't want that. They say, hey, they, we want more capacity, then you pay in bandwidth. That's, that tends to happen with DRAM, especially as we have pushed up the speeds, right? DDR5 and beyond. Uh, on the other hand, CXL, uh, this effect doesn't happen because the CXL memory buffer can hide all that stuff behind it. It always presents the full by 16 bandwidth or by 8 bandwidth uh, to the CPU sound. Correct. So, and the other big advantage related to that is to be able to use older, older, reuse older memory, right? As the, as the CSPs and others who are rolling out uh, new, uh, new Gen 5 based systems or Gen 5 DDR systems, the DDR4 memory uh, now is incompatible, right? Till DDR4, you could, still use DDR3 and DDR2 module, then the controller will, uh, you know, ratchet down. But now uh, it's physically incompatible. So now uh, normally CSPs would be recycling this thing, but they can use it behind CXL buffers and reuse this memory. And then of course, the big thing is, again, as I said, on the left side, the, that does not mean, you know, uh, DRAM attached to the CPU is doomed is definitely still the memory of choice. Don't get me wrong. It has the lowest memory latency, uh, while we have to contend with the higher memory latency of a CPU attached, you know, uh, compared to the you know, CPU attached, right? So in the end, as we'll see, uh, all these techniques are, so yes, you add CXL memory, but in the end, you don't really want to execute out of CXL memory. You always bring things near to the DRAM. Okay, so let's see uh, how we do that. So next slide, please.
so here, here's a slide to show you know, what happens when you when you have a CXL based uh, memory uh, you know added in the system. When it boots, it will come up as two. You know, you know I'm just making it simple. Take a sing, uh, single socket server and with its own DRAM, and then it's it's got a CXL attachment. Such a system will come up, and the BIOS will let the OS know that hey, you got two new nodes, right? One is a near this near mem, and often people call it near memory, which is a native DRAM, and the far memory, which is the CXL. Now the OS takes, you know, it, it now becomes cognizant of this thing, right? So when, as I show on the left side, um, the OS will then, you know, allocate. Of course, OS is the one which allocates memory to any uh, any running workload. So if for a big workload which needs CXL side memory as well, uh, beyond what's allocated in the DRAM, once the workload starts executing, if the OS uh, is, senses that it's going too much in the CXL side, it will do the page movements, you know, hot pages from the CXL side, bring it and find some cold pages on the DRAM side and swap them, right? So, and often it will do that by stalling the application. It will say, okay, this application is going too much here. It will stall it. It will do the whole 4K page or whatever the size of the page is um, and then let it go. And then, yes, you got to have now extra things in the in the OS where it's doing the telemetry because at any given time, you have to constantly monitor, okay, which pages are becoming hot and which are not, right? And things like that. So so this is the tradition, this is the way, and, and Linux has already rev revved up a lot uh, starting you know, more than two years ago when the first CXL recognizable Linux was introduced, right? At, I think version 5.1 or something. Now we are at 6.5. So Linux has really added a lot of nifty techniques to do this uh, you know, data movement. Now on the right side, uh, what again, this is really just a little plug for what Intel CPUs can do, right? So what we have, we have in, uh, you know, introduced two features which are unique to us. Go ahead and uh, hit the return, please. Yeah. So what we have is showing you the two unique features uh, which are unique to the Intel CPUs. One is this, what we call the hetero interleave, right? Where the address space is interleaved between the local DRAM and the CXL side, right? So this not only adds to the system memory, because after all, CXL is uh, memory is always meant to add capacity to the system memory. So it adds system memory, but at the same time, it can get you a lot more bandwidth, right? So for things like machine learning and other workloads, which are very bandwidth hungry, uh, not all workloads are bandwidth hungry, but those which are can benefit from this, right? And then the other mode is actually a TCO play, what we call the flat memory mode, whereby, again, you expand the system memory, but you expand it using cheaper CXL memory. And uh, like we did a demo, and I put in some backup slides, you guys can look later or you can ask me questions, uh, where we put DDR4 DRAM on the CXL side, while the system side was you know, regular DDR5, the native memory. And we showed uh, SAP HANA database, how we ran it purely out of DRAM first, and then we ran it uh, on the combined DRAM and CXL, and how the performance barely degraded by, by barely about two or 3%, right? So this mode is really about TCO reduction, not so much about performance improvement. While the hetero interview mode, of course, is, is going to improve the performance in the uh, for any bandwidth hungry, hungry applications. And yeah, so the way we do that, and the, another big one is uh, the OS version, it's not these modes are not dependent on the OS version because the OS is fooled into thinking that there's only one new one in the system. So it doesn't do any page movements or anything. It thinks there's only one tier. So there's nothing to move, right? So one can use uh, an old Linux as early as 5.1 version, like I said, uh, and in fact, that's what we use to show up that flat memory mode demo at supercomputer. Okay, next next one. I think that's that's essentially my you know main thing. And then uh, this slide is really about how we are committed. You know how our roadmap is fully aligned. Uh, so we started with the uh, Eagle Stream platform, which was the Sapphire Rapid was the fourth generation CPU, and then the fifth generation is the EMR. And so uh, we were the you know Intel was the first one to introduce. Uh, the CXL, because most of the demos in the early days were all done using Sapphire Rapids. Uh, but we knew at the time that, you know, there's not going to be much revenue in the system in the, from from this feature only because the ecosystem, right? So the 
Intel has developed so many standards in the past, uh, things like USB and PCIe itself, right? So SATA, PCIe, you name it. So early on, you need the device ecosystem uh, to be, you know, to get going, right? So that that's really was the main purpose, other than, of course, introducing the CXL uh, version 1.1. Then come the next generation, uh, we will support and we disclose all this for the GNR uh, or what we call burst stream platform, where we had these two CPUs at the hot chips consortium last year, we disclosed that the GNR will support 2.0. It's not launched yet. So right, yeah. you know, sometime uh, later in the year or when they announce, they will launch this. But, but yes, and then we have this uh, unique memory modes. And then the big, uh, big uh, application there will be memory pooling, which of course we will support. And uh, and then of course, and we'll always keep up. So like the next gen CPUs, future gen, we will we'll continue supporting CXL. So. Okay, next slide. Yeah, again, we can almost skip this, but just to impress on the audience that how CXL is now uh, 250 member strong consortium right so all these founding members on the left side and then uh, recent years uh, these other coherent uh, communication uh, you know protocols like open copy from ibm and then gen z was this big one i think originally started by heavily packet hpe and then of course c6 right which was started by xilinx i think so all these uh, uh, what you call standard bodies also you know they they fold it and they say hey let's just all go with one one protocol cxl so now cxl is really strong so whoever wanting to adopt it should feel very confident that it's not going to be going away anytime soon okay next one i think i'm at the end of it so we can just quickly summarize um, so yeah so basically the memory intensive workloads are dominating today's landscape and increasing memory capacity purely on CPU attached DRAM is getting expensive. But of course, CPU attached DRAM is the prime memory, as I pointed out earlier. And in the end, you never let any workload execute from the farm and you always use CPU DRAM. So uh, processor manufacturers like us are doing everything to boost the bandwidth and capacity of the CPU DRAM. Uh, and then CXL protocol runs over the existing PCI links allows for augmenting the system memory footprint uh, at a lower cost. And you know, as those advantages are pointed out, we are fully committed to CXL and uh, CXL protocol is here to say. So, and for those who are interested, I have some backup slides, but you, you guys can take a look, explaining the memory mode and the head to interleave mode. We don't have time to get into that right now. So. Anyway. 